pretty much everything I do is a collaboration of sorts. Um, and I will serve all different kinds of functions in those collaborations. But ultimately, almost every kind of work that I do is around a social issue. Imagine you're a young woman walking down the street and a man calls out rude comments about your body or even exposes himself. It happens all the time, but some women and a few men have decided they're not going to put up with it anymore. They're using their cell phone cameras and sending pictures of their harassers to the web. So some of my friends and I got really sick of guys harassing us on the street, and we founded a, a cyber active campaign that reached a global audience called Hollaback NYC. It was a really cool project where we were trying to just basically get people talking about this issue of street harassment because it happens so frequently to so many of us. Me walking to work, it would happen at least four or five times a day. Hey baby, blah, 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 whatever. You smell like this, you look like this, you're just inappropriate things. And so we started a blog where women will take pictures of their experiences with street harassment, capture it with a cell phone. We just started posting these pictures and all of a sudden, women all over the world started posting their pictures. Mormon housewives in Idaho, women in India would say, oh, we call that Eve teasing in India. You know, and then people said, well, I, I want to start a Hollaback chapter of my own. And we said, great. And so all of a sudden, all over the world, we had this cyber active street harassment fighting machine. And um, it was just such a cool, cool example of how when an interactive artistic approach is combined with activism, it's a perfect balance. In Larkin's gender maintenance performance, she deals with daily ritual. She has a great sensitivity to, uh, to how we, on a day-to-day -day basis, reinforce our gender. And she problematizes this in very interesting ways in performance by having performers do common daily rituals, but with very unwieldy tools. So maybe instead of a nail file, you would have some cheese whiz. So maybe instead of some tweezers, you would have some, um, like a spatula or, you know, or some kitchen utensils. You just would never have the right tools to get done what you need to do. I created some instructional videos of what it takes to be a pretty girl. And I had some performers reenact them. One summer, I kept a blog documenting my gender and what I would do to maintain it. And one of my friends asked me, how long do you think you spend reaffirming your gender role? And I said, I don't know, maybe something around two minutes. And then I found out that most of my time and resources are in some way connected to maintaining my appearance and my wanting to pass as feminine. Lately, I've been questioning what is sexy and how far am I willing to go to appear this way. I'm too sexy for my shirt, too sexy for my shirt, so sexy it hurts. And I'm too sexy for my man, too sexy for my man, New York and Japan. What it makes clear in the piece is that performance isn't limited to uh, a performance in front of an audience. Performance happens uh, anywhere, any place, uh, in public, in private, um, when you're plucking your eyebrows in the morning to be ready to face the world. That's every bit as much of a performance as a performance in, in front of people at 8 p.m. who bought tickets. Sometimes I'll take really personal things and put them in a public space, like in feeling not so fresh. We moved my room literally into Union Square. Then everybody could see 
what goes on behind the closed doors of a girl getting ready. And so maybe they'll see plucking or shaving or things that they never even thought about. You know, the, all the products that go into it, all of the time and energy that's put into this performance. Larkin is interested in how gender is performed on a day-to-day -day basis by people in the United States. And she's interested in highlighting that gender is a performance. And so through performance, she's able to drill down to, uh, to some of the, the issues that, uh, that she's concerned about and she thinks others should be concerned about with how gender is represented, how gender is maintained. In the event, Sexual Assault Early Speak Out, Say So for short, um, happens every spring and it's sort of a forum for survivors to speak out and share their story. Um, this past year, Larkin participated and she also spoke out and shared her story, but she did on stage, not speaking a word. She covered her mouth in duct tape. Um, she, had te she incorporated technology by having words spoken in the background, um, victim blaming words that um, really speak to the heart of the cultural issues around sexual violence. They don't have that kind of evidence. Why isn't my word enough? I was not believed. The Radical Performance Group is uh, a collaboration between Larkin and another artist uh, named Juliana Cope. Um, but it's also a collaboration between a much larger group of artists that they brought in on a project-by-project -project basis to work with them. And uh, when the project was initiated, Radical Performance Group was uh, creating performances and interventions on a fortnightly basis. And uh, when we founded it, we would meet every two weeks and we'd come up with a project that we could do in two weeks and we'd do it. <laughs> The Radical Performance Group's intervention on the subway was particularly exciting because they addressed the way in which people shut down uh, social interaction upon entering into the public transportation space and uh, highlighted in a way how unnecessary that is and what, what one of the many other options are. So one day somebody said, hey, you know, I'm feeling really isolated when I'm coming home from from work on the subway, it's just a weird environment. Said, okay, no problem, let's go play telephone on the subway. And all of a sudden, everyone on the subway car is like taking out their earphones and talking to each other. You got the whole train? Yeah. Okay, and finally? Larkin has a terrific sensibility about American culture, about gender in American culture, about stereotypes in American culture, about the border between, between the private and the public. And I think it's going to be great for her, really important for her, to explore some of these same issues in collaboration with artists who aren't from the United States. Save